on the chest and uh, a gray stripe around the bottom of the shorts and maroon numbering. Cumberland will be moving left to right as you're listening in. All on our live or of audio feed right here at GoCumberlandAthletics.com. Cumberland wins the opening tip, and they will get the first possession. They find Davis at the high post. She makes a move, kicks it out into the corner to Rongo, so brings it back out to uh, Johnson. Johnson on the left wing looking at a zone defense, lets it fly for three. That one off to the right. Backdoor rebound being batted around by Freeman. But eventually the Tigers will reel it in. Going on the attack, they'll go over to Lake on the left side. She's going to go back door. Now they kick it back up. Top of the key, three on the way. That was no good by Lexi Lake. And now they'll get an offensive rebound into the corner for another three, and that one is no good. I think we'll switch over and we'll call the Lake sisters by their first names to make it a little less confusing for our listeners. So we have Faith and Lexi. Now a turnover by Cumberland as they try to get it inside. Nice defense by the Tigers. They'll go the other way. Over on the left, Faith with the ball. Now they get it to the high post to McGeorge. McGeorge trying to make a move. Excuse me, that's Pritchett. Pritchett brings it all the way out to Pedigo. She'll reset it. Over to the right side on the elbow to Pritchett. Looking at a man-to-man -man defense. They'll swing it quickly to Pedigo on the left wing. Back up top into the hands of Lexi. Can't fire the three. Finds her sister, Faith. Cumberland playing great defense here. Two on the shot clock. They got to make a move. They get it off in time. Good if it goes. It doesn't. Cumberland with a great defensive stop. They'll push it up to Johnson on the left wing in transition. Defense back well. Still in a 0-0 game here early. Rongos out of the corner. Three ball. Good. Cumberland draws first blood here early. Up 3-0. Pedigo handling the ball. Shades over to the right looking at what appears to be a man-to-man. -man. She's inside the arc. Keeps her dribble alive. Very patient. Eventually got it underneath. Davis is going to be called for the foul. As they got it to McGeorge underneath, she'll shoot two. Davis was right there to meet her. Got a lot of ball, but also got a lot of arm. At the free throw line is McGeorge. First one is up and in. She'll have another. She's a 77% shooter on the season. As a team, they shoot 75% from the free throw line. She goes two for two. Two minutes off the clock. Cumberland up by one. Tigers will show a little full court defense. Walton a trap. Nice job skipping it over to Freeman. Freeman trying to go back door to Davis, and that's turned over. That was the right play just not the right execution Davis a little upset at herself felt like she mistimed her jump missed opportunity for the Phoenix Pedigo brings it across looking at a man to man gets a bounce pass to the high post to Pritchett she'll square up and shoot it from 15 and knock it down Campbellsville jumps in front by one four to three they'll go back into that three quarter court defense Sexton breaks the timeline, finds Rongos, kicks it over to Johnson. Three on the way from the left wing. No good. Too strong. Long rebound will go to Cumberland. Second chance opportunity. They'll stay in their zone defense. They'll find Freeman on the right wing. Cross court pass over to Rongos. She hit one there a moment ago. This time wants to get closer. Nice bounce pass inside to Davis, and Davis will lay it in. Cumberland back out in front by one. They're going to quickly go up to Lexi. Her layup in transition is good, and that, that was uh, Faith. I apologize. Got to get back. This offense wants to push the ball. There's a reason they average 84 points per game. They'll stay in that zone defense. They'll be in that most of the game. Rongos in the corner up to Freeman. Cross court pass to Johnson. Three on the way from the right side. No good. She's now 0 for 3 from outside. Long rebound to Pedigo. She'll push right up the middle of the court. Pass the free throw line down to the left block. Freeman blocks it. Great defense. Got it over to Sexton. Cumberland with the stop in transition. Quickly up to Johnson down to the right side. They'll go back to Sexton. Sexton goes right in the middle, running off the glass and in. She found that soft spot in that zone. It was able to make the defense pay. Cumberland back out in front by one. Six and a half minutes to go opening quarter. Pettigo to Pritchett, pushed off the high post, wants to get closer. Nice bounce pass into McGeorge. Her layup is good. Tough shot. Rongos was all over her, recovered well defensively. Back and forth we go. 
Sexton pushes, gets it up to Freeman. Freeman down to the left wing, cross court pass, finds Johnson. Goes back to Sexton to reset it. As they find Freeman now down in the corner to Rongos, it's gonna be smacked out of bounds off the hands of McGeorge, and that's gonna get our first subs of the game, and it'll come from Cumberland. We're gonna see Misha McKinney in for the first time. We're also gonna see Kennedy Powell in for the first time, and J.C. Swafford in for the first time. So three fresh sets of legs for the Phoenix as they trail by one here in the opening quarter about midway through. Also seeing some action there on the Tiger bench, and now a turnover, the third of the game already for Cumberland. Pedigo will push, has it at the top of the key, picked up by Swafford. Shades over to the right, looking at a man-to-man. -man. Nowhere to go with the ball, gets it up top to Faith. Faith will shade to the left, gets it back to Pedigo, who cut across the uh, lane to get there. Now they'll find Pritchett, they're gonna go into McGeorge and it's stolen by Swafford. Swafford's gonna slow it down, wait on the Calvary, now gets a rounder player, finds Davis in the corner, 15 footer, good. Cumberland back out in front by one. Cumberland doing much better getting back on defense this time. They'll swing it to the right side to Faith. Up top to Pedigo, she'll reset it up near the logo. Bounce pass to Pritchett. Wants to go inside to McGeorge, her layup on the way, blocked. They're able to keep it in bounds. They'll find Pritchett in the short corner on the left side. Dribble hand off to Pedigo down in the corner. Five on the shot clock. They'll find McGeorge on the low block. Back to Pedigo. She goes all the way underneath the basket. Reverse layup is in. Boy, that was beautiful. No panic in the offense there as the shot clock was winding down. Back out in front go the Tigers by one. McKinney in the short corner. Goes down low. Shot on the way. No good. Powell had a good look at it. Now in transition, Cumberland able to get back. They'll swing it over to the right side to Faith. Faith's going to give it up to Pritchett near the left high post. She'll get a screen from McGeorge. Shoots the jumper instead, and it'll fall. And that'll put them up by three. That's their largest lead of the game so far. Four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Sexton able to break a double team. Gets all the way down. Bounce pass to McKinney. McKinney's going to lay it up on the other end. Great job attacking that zone once again by Kiara Sexton. Really good pace to this game so far. Both teams wanting to get out and push the ball. Bounce pass over on the left wing to Lexi. Gets it inside to McGeorge. Her shot's on the way and in. Boy, she's a good player. And they are making a concerted effort to get it to her on the low block. Up to a three-point lead once again. That matches the largest for either team. Sexton. Gets past her defender, back into the zone, layup on the way, good! Able to split a double team using the Euro step. Cumberland cuts it to one. Here in the three minute mark, first quarter. Pedigo calls out the play, looking at a man to man. He'll go over to the right side, able to get it to Pritchett. Pritchett goes back up to Pedigo, then gives her a screen. Wants to go back to Pritchett, pushed off the high post, well guarded. Now they go back door, somebody fell asleep, it's coming wide open, back door was Lexi Lake and they hit her. Tigers back out in front by three, under three to go first quarter. Johnson gets it over to Sexton, they break the timeline. Now back over to Johnson in the left wing, back to Sexton near the logo. They'll go to the high post to McKinney, 15 footer on the way, no good, too strong, long rebound will fall to Swafford. Cumberland second chance opportunity. Swafford gets past her man, drops it off to McKinney, layup on the way, and they're gonna call a charge. And I believe they'll wave the basket off. And we're gonna get a ton of subs coming into the game here. We'll make sure to get them all out as soon as we can it'll bring us for our first media timeout here today 226 remaining in the first quarter good action so far 16 13 is your score this is phoenix basketball on the cumberland sports network
Comfort Suites is a proud supporter of Cumberland Athletics and is the only all-suites hotel in Lebanon, offering larger, more spacious rooms for every overnight stay. A $1 million renovation has been completed, giving the facility a fresh look and contemporary style. Guests can access the indoor pool, hot tub, sauna, and fitness room. And as always, complimentary breakfast is included and features eggs, biscuits, gravy, waffles, pastries, and muffins, fresh fruit, juice, and coffee. Call 615-443-0027 to make a reservation or visit Choice Hotel. An active lifestyle needs good vision and healthy eyes. To see your best, whether playing contact sports or reading your mobile device, call Franklin Family Eye Care in Mount Juliet, the official eye care provider of Cumberland Athletics. Dr. John Franklin offers primary eye care for vision and eye health conditions, including retina care and LASIK. Call Franklin Family Eye Care at 615-754-IC. That's 615-754-4733. 2.26 remaining in the opening quarter. It's been a good ball game so far, 16-13. The Tigers with the ball in the lead coming out of the break. We do have a lot of new players in for the Tigers. Sarah Sutton has checked into the ball game. Handling the ball right now is Lauren Lee. She's going to get past her defender in the lane. She's going to be fouled and go to the line. Maddie Boyle also into the game. For Cumberland, it'll be Davis, Rongos, Oldham, who just checked in, Swafford, and Abby Morgan. First free throw is up and in. Pushes it to a four-point lead. Make it five. That's the largest lead of the game for either team. Oldham will push the ball up the court. No pressure this time. Staying in that zone defense. They get it into the corner to Swafford on the left side. Gets past her defender. Drops it off to Davis. Davis trying to work. Goes back to Swafford. 15-footer out of the short corner. Rolls out. And we get a rebound by the Tigers. They'll push the ball up the court. They get it to Sutton. Eventually, they'll swing it back over to Calvert, who is also checked in. She'll handle the ball near the key. Now they'll give it up once again. And that is Lee handling it. Lee into the lane. Over to Boyle on the left wing. Now they want to go inside to the post player, and they're going to travel with it. Nice defense by Davis as they got it inside. I believe that is Caitlin Wilkes. So a turnover. Cumberland with an opportunity here to score on a turnover with about a minute left to go in the first quarter. Still in that zone defense are the Tigers. Oldham into the lane on the right side, kicks it over to Rongos in the corner, brings it out of there, almost turned over. Cumberland has to, now it's gonna be an over and back. So Cumberland turns the ball right back over with an over and back. One minute left to go here in the opening quarter. Lee will handle the ball at the logo, looking at that man-to-man -man bounce pass over to Calvert on the left wing. Calvert wants to go inside. They do so. Muscle on her way in. No good. Davis with the board. She'll kick it out to Abby Morgan. She'll slow it down a little bit. Finds Oldham on the left wing. Oldham picks up her dribble, goes back over. Now they go a little two-man game out front as they try to find an open player. Rongos eventually comes open for three out of the corner. She's hit two from there, and that one's big as it cuts the lead down to two. Shot clock and game clock almost identical at this point. Tigers have an opportunity to hold for the final shot if they choose. Lee will dribble over to the right, all the way down to the short corner. Nice seal on the back door. Caitlin Wilkes came from the opposite block and just sealed her player off. Cumberland here, eight seconds to go. They get it to the high post to Davis. Davis makes a move, shot off the glass, no good. Long rebound's gonna go to Calbert. She's not gonna get it off, and that's how the first quarter will end. A lot of action in the first quarter. It's a four-point lead. Here at the first after one quarter, Cumberland trailing the number one team in the country, 20-16. to 16. You're listening to Phoenix Basketball on the Cumberland Sports Network. 
If you're into sports, Sports World is the place to gear up. Sports World has the newest styles of uniforms for kids and adults, as well as the very latest in sports equipment. They have a wide variety of cleats for men, women, and kids. Sports World can also handle all of your screen printing and monogramming needs, and they can make plaques and trophies for any event. Get ready for your favorite sport at Sports World on the Bypass in Lebanon next to Lebanon Chemical, or call 444-6554 for Sports World. Enterprise Rent-A-Car is the company with a wrap car, which means you get the best rental package around. With weekend specials available, Enterprise is the perfect choice for that trip to the ball game or that getaway with a family. Not only will they set you up with a great rental vehicle at a great price, but they'll also make life easier by picking you up. Before you get away, get on the phone and call Enterprise Rent-A-Car at 1-800-RIT-A-CAR. Enterprise Rent-A-Car on the bypass in Lebanon. And welcome back into the Dallas Floyd Phoenix Arena, where it is a four-point lead for the Tigers of Campbellsville University, 20-16. to 16. They will have the ball coming out of the timeout. They put 20 points up on the board. Uh, they That's right on their average. Cumberland has also turned the ball over five times. They could not afford to have five turnovers a quarter. They have played really well here. Shot the ball well, 50% from the field. Campbellsville better, actually, at 61% from the field. Starting five back out for Cumberland while the Tigers will keep that second string out there. And it works out for them as they hit a three on the left wing from Sarah Sutton. And that'll push it out to their largest lead of the game at six. Freeman goes back door to Rongos. A little 18-footer good. Great pass from Freeman. And Rongos not afraid to pull the trigger at any moment. Nor should she, nor should she be. Cumberland back on the attack, or excuse me, uh, Tigers back on the attack, and it's going to be stolen. Cumberland comes up with a steal as they try to go down low. Sexton up the right sideline, gets it over to Johnson. She's open for three, top of the key, no good. Trying to get her going. She's yet to score a point in this ball game. In transition, they're going to go back door to Wilkes, and her shot is off. Davis able to get the rebound and get it over to Johnson. Davis calling for a breather as well. Misha McKinney up off the bench to oblige. Zone defense once again, as we've seen throughout from the Tigers. Freeman on the left wing. Cross court pass to Johnson. Three ball on the way. Good! Cuts it to two. Lee handle the ball near the logo. Shades over to the right. Keeps her dribble all the way down in the short corner. Eventually, they'll go over to the left side to Calvert. She didn't like what she saw. Gives it up. In the lane, running layup. No good by Boyle. They're going to say one of the Campbellsville players had their foot on the line. And that'll give a stop in action. Misha McKinney a chance to check in. Coach Colvin uh, seeing an opportunity here to work out this second string, leaving them in here. First two minutes plus to start the second quarter. Cumberland able to make a, a mini run here. They can tie it or take the lead with a three on this possession. Sexton over on the right, backs it up. Finds Freeman on the left side. Now they go to McKinney at the high post. McKinney gets it into the corner to Rongo. She'll let it fly from there. No good, too short. Long rebound, and the Tigers have an opportunity in transition, Lee, though, going to back it up. Eventually, a long two will be left well short. Ball saved in bounds, but it goes right to Cumberland. They got numbers if they push. Sexton across the timeline, slows it down now, and almost loses the ball, able to get it back. Finds Johnson, three on the left wing. No good, rolled out. Three on the way in transition. No good by Campbellsville. Misha McKinney, a good job getting out there and contesting. Now they'll get it underneath to Rongos. They kick it out for three. Good! Cumberland out in front by one. Elena Rongos with her third three of the game now in double figures. 24-23 your score. 640 and counting. First quarter, or first half I should say. Boyle top of the key goes over to the left side to Lee. Lee goes back door, layup is in, 
and count the basket as Wilkes is fouled. She'll go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. Sexton will pick up her first, and it appears starters will be back in minus the shooter. So Pedigo, Faith Lake, Lexi Lake, Ashley McGeorge, and Courtney Pritchett will be back in in a minute. McGeorge will wait for the free throw. So if there's a made free throw here by Wilkes, she'll make her way back in. She nails it. Pushes the lead back out to two. And what a great job by that second unit by Campbellsville to hand it back over to their starters with a two-point lead. Cumberland able to break the timeline pretty easily. They'll find Johnson. Now they'll swing it down to Rongos. Rongos, the hot hand right now. Sexton, top of the key, over to Johnson. She's trying to get herself going. Three, no good. Long rebound. Will go out of bounds, and it'll be last touch by Campbellsville. Fortuitous bounce for the Phoenix. See if they can capitalize. Freeman will inbound. It'll be 20 seconds on the shot clock. She gets it to McKinney near the high post. She makes a move, spins past her player into the lane. That's they're going to call a block. Campbellsville faithful don't like it, but her feet were not set. That's the way it works. Misha McKinney will go to the line. She'll have a chance at two here. She can tie the game up if she hits both with four minutes off the clock to start the second quarter. Number one's up and in. Number two on the way, McKinney hits both. Tie game, 26 all, six minutes to play. Both teams shooting really well. Camelsville just over 50%, Cumberland just under it. Camelsville will work through their progressions. They'll find Pedigo, she'll bring it to the logo to call out the play. Bounce pass to the high post to Pritchett. Pritchett wants to go back door. Can't do so. Hands it off to McGeorge at the high post. She makes a move into the layup. Running layup. Got her own rebound. Missed the second chance, and Cumberland this time will clean it up. Cumberland can take the lead with any made field goal this trip down. Freeman into the lane. Tough shot. Not going to go. Camelsville will push. We'll go over to the right side to Faith. Faith into the lane. Ball's on the ground. Multiple players going for it. Jump ball possession arrow will go to Cumberland. Nice effort on both sides. And so far, we've had a really, really good game between Cumberland and the undefeated top-ranked Tigers of Campbellsville. Freeman breaks the timeline and then turns it over, tried to split a double team. Bounce pass over to McGeorge. She makes a move and lays it in. Beautiful move there by Ashley McGeorge. Kind of a stutter step on the right side from about 15 feet. Got in and laid it up. They'll stay in that zone defense. Sexton's going to get it across the timeline to Freeman down in the right corner. She chases it down, has to bring it out. Hit the deck, able to get it to Rongos. And this defense is really taking Cumberland out of their comfort zone. Sexton in the lane, layup on the way, no good. McKinney almost had a rebound, mistimed her jump a bit. Pritchett will push. Gets it to the high post. Back to Pedigo to re reset the offense. Now over to the right side to Pritchett on the elbow. They work through two curl screens. Find McGeorge at the top of the key. Now they want to go over to the right. They did exactly what they wanted. Lexi Lake open for three, no good. Cumberland with the rebound. Sexton will push. They get it to Rongos in transition. Who goes right back to Sexton. Cross court over to Johnson. Johnson picks up her dribble. Nowhere to go with it. Back to Sexton. Now they'll find McKinney at the high post. McKinney goes back door. Nice pass. And Freeman will lay it up. Boy, I didn't think it was there. I thought that was going to be a turnover. And it got right to her. Hey, Cumberland has tied the game up at 28 apiece. Under four to go. First half. They'll find Pritchett. She'll let it fly for three on the left wing. Left it short. Long rebound, though. Will go to Lake. She chases it down to the corner. That's going to go out of bounds. It'll stay. It'll go over to Cumberland. And now Swafford, as well as Oldham, will check in 
after the timeout. You're listening to Phoenix Basketball with 3.38 remaining. It is a 28-28 game. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Family Medical Associates and Pediatrics has an experienced medical team. Doctors Roger McKinney, Bill Robertson, Bernie C., George Robertson, Sam Crutcher, and John Fisk are committed to providing excellent health care to you and your family with flexible hours and walk-in appointment times. Located at 1407 Bedour Parkway in Lebanon, call 444-6203 or visit FamilyMedicalDocs.com. Family Medical Associates and Pediatrics, the official family medical physicians of Cumberland University. Serving Wilson County since 2006, the Music City Star is Middle Tennessee's only passenger rail service. With stops in Lebanon, Martha, and Mount Juliet, the Music City Star can get you to work in the mornings and home in the afternoons without the stress. The train also has an evening trip on Fridays for those who want to enjoy downtown Nashville's restaurants and entertainment venues. For ticket and schedule information, visit musiccitystar.org or call 862-5950. The Music City Star, there is no traffic on the train. 338 remaining in the first half. It's a 28-28 game. Cumberland fighting tooth and nail here against top-ranked Campbellsville. Both teams shooting the ball well right at 45% apiece. Actually, both identical at 11 of 24. Cumberland shooting the three ball well, 4 of 11 from behind the arc. Rongos with three of those. Johnson at the left side. Over to Swafford near the logo. Goes over. To Oldham on the right side, they find Davis down low. She wants to make a move, trying to power her way in. Loses the handle, able to get it back. Hands it off to Johnson, 10 on the shot clock. Johnson in the lane, gets past her defender off the glass and in. Boy, she hadn't got it going from outside, but that one was pretty as she cuts it or gets back out in front by two. Three minutes left to go here in the quarter. Pritchett near the high post, going to get it into the hands of Pedigo. Pettigo back over to Lake in the left corner. She's going to take it all the way out the other side. Nowhere to go with it. Gets to Pritchett. Seven on the shot clock. They're going to go inside now. Working her way down is Pritchett. Off the glass. No good. Rebound put back is good. And a nice job on the back side by Caitlin Wilkes to tie the game back up at 30 apiece. Oldham across the timeline, splits a double team, gets past three defenders all the way down, layup no good, but she is going to be fouled, and they will whistle Wilkes on that one. Well, that was a just a player making a play. As Breon Oldham will step to the free throw line for the first time. Cumberland, two for two as a team, both those coming from Misha McKinney. Pettigo will check out of the ball game, and Lauren Lee will take over point guard duties. Cumberland can retake the lead here with either one of these free throws going through the hoop. That one does not. She will have another. Two twenty-seven remaining in the second quarter. Glad to have you along, everybody. As number two goes in, I'm pretty confident we got a good amount of Campbellsville listeners in. Hope everybody is dry and safe, guys. 31 to 30 is your score. Cumberland battling here in the first half. They'll go over on the right side to Lee. Now up top, three on the way, no good by Faith Lake. Rebound though will fall to Campbellsville. Second shot, no good. Ball being batted around. Oldham will dive on the floor and pick it up eventually. Does a great job finding a teammate. And Cumberland gets the stop. They can build on a one point lead here with under two to go in the half. We'll find Johnson near the logo. Now they go to the high post to Davis. Davis back door. Swafford makes a move, gets it blocked from behind. It's going to go out of bounds. It will stay with Cumberland. Nice move by Swafford to find a little extra room, but a better recovery by Campbellsville defensively. 11 on the shot clock. Cumberland inbounding underneath their own basket. They'll get it in Oldham. She'll bring it to Johnson near the logo. Six, five, four. Johnson going one-on-one. -on -one, dribbles it off her leg. Going to have to put it up from deep. And didn't even get a look at it. Good defense by the Tigers as the shot clock winded down. 133 remaining in the first half. It's been a quick one so far. Not an awful lot of fouls have been whistled. Only three total fouls here in the second quarter. Officials letting them play. Hopefully they'll continue with that. From the high post, 15-footer will fall. 
Courtney Pritchard, I don't think, initially wanted to shoot the ball, but the defenders fell off of her. So she let it fly and uh, let it flew. Oh, no. J.C. Swaffer will do the same into the corner. And Cumberland back out in front by one. 33-32, one minute to go. Great ball game so far. Lee calling out the play. He'll go to Pritchett near the high post. She just hit one there. She's going to try to get in a little closer this time. Shot no good. Loose ball goes to Oldham. Did a good job getting to that one. She wants to push it up the right sideline. She's going to go all the way down, and she's going to be called for the charge. I said it a moment ago, and, and this time I'll say it on our side. That's the right call. Her feet weren't set, but she lowered the shoulder. Anytime you lower the shoulder, they're going to give you the call. Cumberland's bench not happy with it. But that is the right call. She lowered that shoulder. 33-32. Cumberland can get a stop. They can hold for the final shot if they would choose to do so. Pritchett at the high post. Doesn't want to pull it from there. She'll go over to the right side of the lake. Now back over to Pritchett. She'll let it fly for three outside. That one's no good. Good block out underneath. It's going to squirt out of bounds. They're going to say that's... They're going to say that's off of Cumberland. So Campbellsville with 16.5, shot clock officially turned off. They can hold for the final shot if they choose to do so, almost turned over. Eventually they'll get it to Lexi Lake, who's gonna hand it off to Lauren Lee, and they'll run the offense through her. Seven on the clock, Lee gets past her defender, down to the free throw line, crosses over, loses it. Swafford comes up with a steal, three on the clock, she's gotta put it up. Swafford trying to get a spot. It goes, but it's after the horn. But boy, a great job by Cumberland making a, uh, a play there and having an opportunity. And Cumberland will go into the locker room at halftime, leading the number one team in the country by a point. 33-32 is your score. What a great first half of basketball. Both teams playing hard. Both teams shooting the ball well. A lot of intensity, and the officials letting them play. Love it. All right, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll give you all your halftime stats. It'll be a two-minute break. We'll be back after that. As a business owner, you are offered an overwhelming array of sign and graphic options in today's marketplace. I'm Rick Stewart, owner of Signs Now in Lebanon. As a local business owner, I'll give you the personal attention you expect from a neighbor, as well as the resources to produce sign and graphic projects of any scope. And we'll stand behind everything we do. Come by Signs Now or give us a call at 444-9770 for the personal attention you deserve and the professional service you expect. At Signs Now, we believe a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Got a sports team? Need team apparel? Southeast Impressions is the place to go. Southeast Impressions can put your team logo on t-shirts, jerseys, hats, jackets, gear bags, or just about anything you want. Don't have a logo? Southeast Impressions has an in-house artist who can design a custom logo for you. From start to finish, Southeast Impressions can help your team get the look they want. Southeast Impressions, 114 Label Pike in Lebanon, or call 443-4700. Service the hometown way. That's THW Insurance. Because THW is an independent agent, you can select from several highly rated insurance companies offering competitive rates and excellent service to best suit your needs for home, auto, life, health, long-term care, business, employer, and identity theft insurance. Ask THW. THW Insurance Services, 321 West Main in Lebanon, or call 443-3849. For an online quote, visit THWINS.com. Dr. Damon Petty, a locally renowned orthopedic surgeon who trained under James Andrews and at the Cleveland Clinic, is the official team physician for Cumberland Athletics. Petty has built his reputation on developing new techniques for shoulder surgery and the treatment of elbows and shoulder injuries in baseball players. To make an appointment with Dr. Petty, call 615-321-0200. You can also visit Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance at toa.com for more information or like TOA on Facebook. And welcome back into the Dallas Floyd Phoenix Arena. So glad to have you along, guys, wherever you are, however you are tuned in. We do appreciate you. We want to take a moment to thank some of our corporate sponsors for the 2021-22 basketball season. Hamilton Springs, Coca-Cola, Dr. Damon Petty with Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and Holiday Inn Express. 
here at the half. It's been a great basketball game so far. 33-32 is your score. Cumberland with the lead over the top-ranked Tigers at Campbellsville University. We'll start here with Campbellsville for your score and wrap-up. Eight points in the ball game for Ashley McGeorge. Six for Courtney Pritchett. Seven coming off the bench for Caitlin Wilkes. Three in the ball game for Sarah Sutton, off, also off the bench. And then four different players with two apiece in Bailey Pedigo, Faith Lake, Lexi Lake, as well as Lauren Lee. For Cumberland, uh, Elena Rongos really had it going. 11 points in the first half, three of four from behind the arc. Our next leading scorer coming off the bench as Misha McKinney has really been a spark. Only eight minutes of play, but put in half, so Cumberland's going to have to get it done uh, defensively. We talked about turnovers in the pregame. Eight turnovers in the ballgame so far for Cumberland have resulted in eight points for Campbellsville. So that hasn't been a huge factor. It's definitely more than what you would like. Uh, but just giving up eight points on eight turnovers, you're not too terribly upset with that. On the flip side of that, Campbellsville has given up six points on seven turnovers. So those are a bit of a wash. Uh, so uh, that's something to keep an eye on as we keep moving. Assists are something also, this team in Campbellsville averaging 20 assists per game, seven here at the half. Cumberland, nine. So of Cumberland's 13 made field goals, nine of them have come off assists. That to me shows that the ball is moving and uh, they are trusting their teammates and their teammates are finding open spots in that zone defense. This zone defense by Campbellsville, uh, a, a tough code to crack. Uh, it, it Different. Coaches you talk to call it different things. I know Coach Lewis at his time coaching the women always called it the twilight uh, defense. Uh, it's it, There's not a lot of teams that run it. They run it year in and year out. It's pretty hard to describe. They're going to pick up about three-quarter court defense. There's multiple areas on the court they're going to try to trap if it gets to you. The whole idea, in my opinion, is to speed your offense up, make you run some of that clock before you get across the timeline, uh, and, and, and take you out of your rhythm. Because so few teams run it, most teams don't prepare for it a whole lot in the offseason. And, uh, and then when you do see it, it can really throw you off and it messes up your rhythm and your timing and all of that and if you know anything about basketball rhythm and timing it's just about everything if you don't have those two things it's going to be hard to win a lot of basketball games uh, so that's the goal of Campbellsville and Cumberland so far for the most part has handled it pretty well they do need to bring the turnovers down if they have eight turnovers in the second half for 16 total in the game I do not think Cumberland will have a shot at winning this in the end Campbellsville is going to make adjustments at the half uh, I, I think Campbellsville may be a bit surprised uh, by this Cumberland team. It's it's so much more improved from what Cumberland's been putting out on the court the last couple of years. Uh, it's more mature. It's deeper uh, and more athletic. We've got uh, we've got players on the uh, uh, coming off the bench right now that could uh, that, that could easily would have been starting for us. Some of them did start for us last year. Uh, so we got girls that can put the ball in the hole. Uh, point in case. 17 points coming off the bench for Abby Morgan in that win against Pensacola down in Florida over the weekend. So she's got a lot of confidence right now. She's been a non-factor so far in this one, but she easily can get it going in the second half if her number is called. And, and that's where Cumberland is trying to develop their game to get to so that they have that depth and have girls that can score when, when those starters don't have it going. For Cumberland offensively, Tyra Johnson has been a bit of a non-factor. She, she's put up seven shots from outside the arc and only knocked down one, two of eight together from the field. She's our leading scorer. She will get it going at some point in this second half. If she can do that and Cumberland can continue to play well defensively, they did much better in the second quarter after giving up 20 points in the first quarter. They only give up. 12 in the second quarter so if they can keep that up and they can get Johnson going uh, and don't allow one of the, uh, the the Lake sisters to start beating them from outside Cumberland's got a shot at this um, it would be a massive upset in my opinion uh, it'd be the first loss of the season for Campbellsville but I, I don't think it's it would be necessarily a shock to me because I've seen this team this year almost beat the number three team in Thomas Moore almost beat Shawnee State who's a perennial uh, um, 
national tournament participant. Uh, they beat some other good teams. So, uh, and it would be a big one, too, for Cumberland because a lot of the games, once we get into January, are going to be out on the road. When you look at the schedule, this is the last home game in the conference for Cumberland until January 13th when we'll play Pikeville. In between then, We'll have two non-conference games and then three road games to open up the 2022 calendar season with Lindsey Wilson, Tennessee Southern, and Life University. So uh, Cumberland's got a, a, a massive opportunity here in front of them to uh, to knock off uh, the number one team in the country. But honestly, more importantly, to get a, a win inside the Mid-South Conference. Uh, this this conference is so good top to bottom. It's just really, really difficult to, to pick up wins. And uh, if they were be able to get this one, it would absolutely be huge. Cumberland, uh, the all-time series, heavily in favor of the Tigers. Want to make sure I get my numbers right. Uh, the all-time series, 16 and 70. So of the 86 matchups that these two teams have uh, had, 70 of them have gone the way of the Tigers of Campbellsville. So uh, it, it historically has not been kind to Cumberland. We'll take another break, guys. When we come back, we'll start getting you ready for the second half. You are listening to Phoenix Basketball on the Cumberland Sports Network. Emmanuel Baptist Church is honored to sponsor Cumberland University Athletics. And we'd love to have you come join us as we stand firm in the Lord this year. We're located at 214 Castle Heights Avenue, a block and a half off of West Main on the right-hand side of the road. We offer many things for adults, students, and children. We have three unique worship services at 214 Castle Heights every Sunday morning. We'd love for you to come join us at. We also offer two Sunday evening worship services, one on campus and one off campus. And you can learn more about us at emmanuelbaptist.com. Did you know that Cumberland University is a Tennessee Promise Institution? That means high school graduates may earn an associate's degree from the university tuition free. Students from across the state are choosing Cumberland over community college because of our unique campus environment, numerous resources that connect students to careers, and outstanding professors. Educational, athletic, and social experiences enhance the learning opportunities. Find out more at cumberland.edu. Cumberland University. Learn what's possible. Comfort Suites is a proud supporter of Cumberland Athletics and is the only all-suites hotel in Lebanon, offering larger, more spacious rooms for every overnight stay. A $1 million renovation has been completed, giving the facility a fresh look and contemporary style. Guests can access the indoor pool, hot tub, sauna, and fitness room. And as always, complimentary breakfast is included and features eggs, biscuits, gravy, waffles, pastries, and muffins, fresh fruit, juice, and coffee. Call 615-443-0027 to make a reservation or visit Choice Hotel. Tells.com. An active lifestyle needs good vision and healthy eyes. To see your best, whether playing contact sports or reading your mobile device, call Franklin Family Eye Care in Mount Juliet, the official eye care provider of Cumberland Athletics. Dr. John Franklin offers primary eye care for vision and eye health conditions, including retina care and LASIK. Call Franklin Family Eye Care at 615-754-IC. That's 615-754-4733. Family Medical Associates and Pediatrics has an experienced medical team. Doctors Roger McKinney, Bill Robertson, Bernie C., George Robertson, Sam Crutcher, and John Fisk are committed to providing excellent health care to you and your family with flexible hours and walk-in appointment times. Located at 1407 Bedour Parkway in Lebanon, call 444-6203 or visit FamilyMedicalDocs.com. Family Medical Associates and Pediatrics, the official family medical physicians of Cumberland University. As a business owner, you are offered an overwhelming array of sign and graphic options in today's marketplace. I'm Rick Stewart, owner of Signs Now in Lebanon. As a local business owner, I'll give you the personal attention you expect from a neighbor, as well as the resources to produce sign and graphic projects of any scope. And we'll stand behind everything we do. Come by Signs Now or give us a call at 444-9770 for the personal attention you deserve and the professional service you expect. At Signs Now, we believe a business with no sign is a sign of no business. And welcome back into the Dallas Floyd Phoenix Arena. I want to take another moment to thank some of our corporate sponsors for the 2021-2022 basketball season. Kenny Salas and the hometown team of Keller Williams Realty, Sinorama, Wilson Emergency Management Agency, uh, Middle Tennessee Wash Pros, and Franklin Family Eye Care. 
Been a great first half of basketball. Uh, both teams playing hard. Both teams shooting the ball well. It's a 33-32 game. Coming into this, Campbellsville averaging 84 points per game on nearly 52% from the field. They were well on their way to that after the first quarter, after putting 20 on the board after 10 minutes. But Cumberland really did a great job defensively in the second half or second quarter, holding them to just 12 points in the quarter. Uh, 41% from the field, so they're about 10 percentage points below their average. Flip side of that, Cumberland's about 10 percentage points above their season average. So they're shooting the ball a little bit better than normal. Campbellsville shooting it a little bit worse than normal. Uh, but, boy, they still they still got the players to go get it done. Ashley McGeorge with eight. Caitlin Wilkes with seven. Uh, and Wilkes coming off the bench. Um, Faith Lake coming into this ballgame. Excuse me, Lexi Lake was just five threes short of uh, cracking the top five all-time list of made three-pointers for Campbellsville. And uh, that is a list with some uh, very talented ladies on it. Uh, to be able to crack a top five three-point list for Campbellsville is, is doing something. So, uh, so that is something to keep an eye on because you know if she gets hits one or two early in this second half, it could very easily get her kick started and get her moving in that direction, and, and that's not what Cumberland wants. So Cumberland's going to have to continue to zone in on her and to continue to uh, to do well defensively and to continue to handle this defense uh, as well as they have. I mean, they, they have had spurts where they've turned it all over, but for the most part, Cumberland has done well handling this defense, uh, so hopefully they'll be able to continue to do that. One last break before we start second half action back in a moment. Comfort Suites is a proud supporter of Cumberland Athletics and is the only all-suites hotel in Lebanon, offering larger, more spacious rooms for every overnight stay. A $1 million renovation has been completed, giving the facility a fresh look and contemporary style. Guests can access the indoor pool, hot tub, sauna, and fitness room. And as always, complimentary breakfast is included and features eggs, biscuits, gravy, waffles, pastries, and muffins, fresh fruit, juice, and coffee. Call 615-443-0027 to make a reservation or visit Choice Hotel. Hotels.com. If you weren't with us in the top of the broadcast, guys, once again, want to send out my prayers and wishes and thoughts, good vibes to the people of Campbellsville and Mayfield, Kentucky. Uh, we know Mayfield, Kentucky has just been absolutely devastated. It's heartbreaking, the news coming out of that area. I know Campbellsville uh, did not get hit as hard, but they are dealing with some power outages, and a lot of their listeners actually tuned into our broadcast as their radio station is out of power at the moment. So uh, we, we hope you guys are well, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in, and hopefully a little basketball can be a distraction for you. As we get back to action, they get it inside quickly to McGeorge. She's fouled. She'll go to the line. We saw this early in the, bro uh, early in the game. They wanted to go to McGeorge a lot down on the block and work through her. We'll see if they can get her going in the second half. She misses number one. She will have another. I say get her going like she didn't play well in the first half. She played fantastic in the first half. So they just want to continue to do what they did well in the first half. She hits number two. So one or two, and that ties the ball game up. And it gives them an opportunity to go in their 2-2-1 defense. Cumberland handling it well. They get it across the timeline to Freeman. Starters from both sides back in the ball game. Sexton, Johnson, Rongos, Davis, and Freeman for the Phoenix. Freeman on the left side gets it inside to Davis. Davis triple teamed. Gets it over to Rongo, so she's going to lose it out of bounds. And Davis put her teammate in a bad spot right there. I think she was just cutting back door to, to try to give the post player an opportunity to operate. And it's turned over, so... Not a good opening possession for the Phoenix. Oh, great backdoor pass. They're going to get it down low and able to score it from there is Lexi Lake. And that puts them out in front by two. That was a great offensive set by the, uh, by the Tigers. Johnson breaks the timeline, gets it over to Rongos. Now down in the corner to Freeman. Foot of the line long, too good. No hesitation from Freeman. And Cumberland has tied it back up at 35 apiece. Those are the type of shots Cumberland is hitting this year that they did not hit last year. Those, when you, you, you take a punch on one end, you come down and you swing right back and connect. Those are the ones Cumberland had missed. And that's what keeps 
an opposing team from building too big of a lead when you can hit those kind of shots. On the other end, Faith Lake drives to the basket on the left side. She'll be fouled by Freeman, so she'll go to the line for two. Faith Lake at the free throw line. Averaging nine points per game. 78% from the free throw line. Hits that one. She'll have another. Number two is good as well. 37-35. Tigers go back out in front by two. They've led by as many as six. That was in the second quarter. Rongos in the corner. And trying to do a bounce pass to Johnson. And they're going to turn it over. Pedigo will push. Across the timeline. Nobody picked her up. Takes it all the way down. Tries a bounce pass. Surprised she didn't shoot that 15-footer. And Cumberland gets the steal. Well, she was wide open. Trying to force it inside to her post player. And now Cumberland, an opportunity for some points off a turnover. Sexton gets it over to Freeman. Freeman over to Johnson on the left wing. Johnson cross-court pass, dangerous pass, and Pedigo steals it back. Pedigo's going to go down, lay up on the other end, no good, but she's going to be fouled. Oh, they're going to call a charge. <laughs> 37-35, and Pedigo will come out of the ball game. Freeman will come out as well as Swafford re-enters. Lauren Lee back in for Camelsville. Once again, 37-35, your score. Sexton across the timeline. Bounce pass over to Johnson. Johnson able to save it. Goes back to Sexton near the logo. Back to Johnson on the right elbow. Johnson will take a step in. Foot on the line. Long two is good. Cumberland ties the game once again. Lee has it at the logo. Looking at what appears to be a man-to-man. -man. Goes over to the left side. Into the hands to Pritchett. Pritchett dribble handoff to Lake. Lake at the top of the key. Gives it back over to Pritchett. Now bounce pass into McGeorge. It'll go out of bounds and it'll be last touched by Campbellsville. It's going to get Caitlin Wilkes into the ball game as McGeorge will get a breather. And with three minutes off the clock in the third quarter, 37 all game. 2-2-1 two, two, full court defense once again by the Tigers. Cumberland has handled it fairly well in this game. Sexton now is going to be, they're going to call a jump ball. And possession or will go to Cumberland, so they'll get to retain possession. Johnson will inbound right in front of the scorer's table. They'll chuck it into the backcourt. Sexton will track it down. Lake's going to come out there and meet her. Now they'll break the timeline. Find Johnson on the left wing. Going to give it to Davis at the high post. It goes over to Sexton on the right side. Gets into the lane and she's going to travel with the ball. And turnover is starting to become an issue for Cumberland. That will now be turnover number 12 for Cumberland. 10 points already given up on the first 11. In a tie game, that's huge. Six and a half to go, third quarter. Lee on the right side. Up top to Faith. Bounce pass over to the left side. Back to Lee. Lee gets a screen. Can't do much with it. Picks up her dribble. Now they're going to go inside. And it's going to be fouled as Davis was trying to contest Caitlin Wilkes underneath. First shot up and in. She'll have another. They've shot the ball well from the free throw line. Now 9 out of 10. Cumberland's only been there four times, knocking down three of them. Number two is good as well. Pushes it back out to a two-point lead. That's going to get Shyla Calvert off the bench for Campbellsville as well as Maddie Boyle. They will remain in that 2-2-1. Two, two, they don't really change what they want to do on the court. You know, it's not depicted by their personnel. Everybody that comes in is going to run the same thing. 
Down in the corner to Rongos. Three on the way. That one no good. She hit quite a few from the corner in the first half. Can't connect there. Now in transition, able to push the ball up as Lee Cumberland gets back well. Pritchett over to Calvert. Back to Pritchett. From about 15, in for a closer look. Calvert eventually from the right side will knock down an 18-footer. Nice ball movement as they go up by four. And now a foul is going to be called on Campbellsville as Sexton was working it across the timeline. Boyle picks that one up, her first. We'll get it into Sexton. She'll walk across the timeline, gets it over to Swafford on the left wing. Swafford down to the elbow, back up top to Sexton near the key. Shades over to the right. Goes to Johnson on the left side. Johnson can't pull the trigger, goes to Swafford. Plenty of time on the clock. He'll reset their offense. Swafford left wing, deep three. No good. Rongo's right there to clean it up. Did not hit the rim. Got to put it up. No good. Davis with the rebound. She'll put it up. It's up. No good. Oh, man. Boy, that thing was in and out. Officially at the five-minute mark here, the third quarter, 41-37. Campbellsville with the ball in the lead. Lee shades over to the right, gets down to the elbow, now down to the baseline, finds Pritchett underneath. It's blocked, and Johnson able to get it. Sexton will take it. Breaks the timeline. Inside the arc, dribble handoff to Rongos. Back up top to Johnson at the key. Johnson over to uh, Swafford. Nice bounce pass into Davis on the left block. She goes to work. Shot on the way. Good. Davis is working hard on that low block. She earned that one. And Cumberland has cut it to two. Lee at the logo. Shades over to the right. And now we're going to get a foul away from the ball. It's going to go against Campbellsville. They're going to call Calvert. And that'll bring us to a media timeout. Coming out of this timeout, Cumberland with the ball, trailing by two, 4-13 remaining in the third quarter. Great game on hand. You're listening to Phoenix Basketball on the Cumberland Sports Network. Did you know that Cumberland University is a Tennessee Promise Institution? That means high school graduates may earn an associate's degree from the university tuition free. Students from across the state are choosing Cumberland over community college because of our unique campus environment, numerous resources that connect students to careers, and outstanding professors. Educational, athletic, and social experiences enhance the learning opportunities. Find out more at cumberland.edu. Cumberland University. Learn what's possible. Dr. Damon Petty, a locally renowned orthopedic surgeon who trained under James Andrews and at the Cleveland Clinic, is the official team physician for Cumberland Athletics. Petty has built his reputation on developing new techniques for shoulder surgery and the treatment of elbows and shoulder injuries in baseball players. To make an appointment with Dr. Petty, call 615-321-0200. You can also visit Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance at toa.com for more information or like TOA on Facebook. 4-13 remaining in the third quarter. It's a 41-39 lead for Campbellsville University. Cumberland shooting 47% from the field. 4 of 13 from behind the arc. Campbellsville 42%, call it 43%. But they have really struggled from behind the arc, just 1 of 10. Cumberland with the ball out of the timeout. They're able to break the timeline. They get it over to Swafford in the right corner. Gets it up top to Johnson. Three ball on the way. No good. They're going to push in transition. Cumberland gets back well. Resetting the offense's lead. Bounce past the high post to Pritchett. She gets a screen. Can't do much with it. Now we're going to get a moving screen. Called on Campbellsville. Now we'll get an opportunity for some subs in the ball game. Sarah Sutton back in for Campbellsville, as is Ashley McGeorge. And look at this. They'll fall out of their full court zone defense. One of the few times today we've seen them do that. Not sure if that's a personnel thing. That's doubtful. Maybe Cumberland getting to them a little bit. 
Swafford, top of the key, into the lane, bounce pass into Rongos. Rongos goes to the other side and lays it in. Rongos, a great job staying under control underneath the basket. And Cumberland has tied it up at 41 apiece with about three minutes to play in the third. Lee near the logo. Goes over to the right side to Sutton. She'll give it back quickly over to the left wing to Lee. Boyle now with it behind the back near the free throw line. Six on the shot clock. They continue to work it through. We'll get a long two. No good. Nice rebound underneath by Cumberland. It'll go off of Campbellsville. Yeah, they got it right. I was about to say it. I think Cumberland got fortunate there, but then the official corrects the call as it goes off of Cumberland. So it will remain with Campbellsville. It'll be 20 on the shot clock. They find Lee. Has on the left side. Up top to Calvert. Now they're going to go down low. Reverse layup. No good. A foul called on Davis. Big George try to reverse layup, and they call a foul on Davis. That's going to get Misha McKinney back in the ball game as Davis picks up her third foul. Misha McKinney played some huge minutes in the first half. Really did well offensively for Cumberland. She comes from a program in Atlanta that went uh, three-plus seasons without losing a game. First shot, no good by McGeorge. Rare miss for the Tigers at the line. They are now 10 to 12 as a team. It's going to give her squad the lead once again. Neither team has ever led by more than six as she hits that one. So it's never been more than a two-possession game at any point of the game. That was in the second quarter. And then Cumberland got back out in front by one at the intermission. Oh, back door to Rongos. Great pass, and Rongos lays it up. What a pass by Kiara Sexton. Then Cumberland back out in front by one with two and a half to go in the third. Lee on the right side. Up top to Calvert. Back to Lee on the left wing. Lee gets a screen, gets it inside all the way down to the right block and lays it up. That was too easy. Back out in front go the Tigers. 44-43 your score. Swaffer near the logo. Gets it over to Johnson on the left wing. Johnson wants to get past her defender. Does so in the lane. Kicks it out. Three on the way for Sexton. God out of the right corner. Johnson doing a good job dishing the ball here. Can't get her shot to fall, but facilitating for her teammates. And Cumberland goes out in front by two with about a minute and a half to go in the third. Lee on the right wing, inside. They get a bounce pass into McGeorge. McGeorge is going to lose it out of bounds. That's going to get Pritchett in for McGeorge. So they'll lose a little bit of size, but Pritchett a little bit better shooter from outside. 15 on the shot clock. They'll get it in to Pritchett. And right as they get it in, she'll get an open look, missed it. Well, she had nobody within about three feet of her. Missed a 16-footer. Johnson in transition. She'll let a 16-footer go and will nail it on a nice one-on-one -on -one move. Cumberland back out in front by three. That matches their largest lead of the game. Excuse me, that's four. That is their largest lead of the game. With one minute to go in the third quarter. Lee over on the right side. Gets it to Faith. Now cross-court pass. Left wing Sutton for three is good. Just the second three of the game for the Tigers. That cuts it down to one, under a minute to go. Big possession here for Cumberland. Want to close out this quarter with as much momentum as possible. Bounce pass to McKinney, high post, shot on the way, off the glass, and they'll call a charge. It absolutely looked like she was inside that semicircle to me, but they're going to call the charge regardless. Now a six-second difference between shot clock and game clock. So they'll almost be able to hold for the last shot. Cumberland can get a stop. They could get a pretty decent look at it. Pettigos check back into the ball game. They'll go over to the right side to Lexi. Now inside to Pritchett. Back to the basket. Eventually 
to Lee as they work through their progressions. Lee wants to go one-on-one -on, -one on the right side. Nowhere to go with it. Pritchett at the high post. Five on the shot clock. They find Lake back door. No good. Cumberland with the stop. Seven on the clock. They can get a good look at it here. They get it to Sexton, but it's stolen. And now going the other way, she's going to be able to lay it up. And Cumberland makes it worse by Fallon. And now with .7 on the clock, they'll have an opportunity to complete a three-point play with essentially no time on the clock and give themselves a two-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. Well, Cumberland gets a great stop on the other end and a chance to get a quality look at the basket to close out the quarter, and then they turn it over. Free throw on the way is good. They'll just inbound and let that one go. So that's how the third quarter will end. 50 to 48 now your score. It's a two-point lead for the Tigers heading into the final quarter. You're listening to Phoenix Basketball on the Cumberland Sports Network. Find all of your Cumberland University athletics information on the web at www.gocumberlandathletics.com. The site features graphics and links to rosters, schedules, program details, and news stories for all Phoenix sports. Links for live stats, video, and audio may also be found on the web. For game day updates, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at GoCUPhoenix. For your home for Cumberland Athletics, GoCumberlandAthletics.com. If you're into sports, Sports World is the place to gear up. Sports World has the newest styles of uniforms for kids and adults, as well as the very latest in sports equipment. They have a wide variety of cleats for men, women, and kids. Sports World can also handle all of your screen printing and monogramming needs, and they can make plaques and trophies for any event. Get ready for your favorite sport at Sports World on the Bypassing Lebanon next to Lebanon Chemical, or call 444-6554 for Sports World. Don't forget, fans, you can find all of your Cumberland University athletic information right here at GoCumberlandAthletics.com. The site features new graphics and links to roster schedules, program details, and news stores on all Phoenix sports. Links for live stats, video, and audio may also be found on the site. For game day updates, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at GoCUPhoenix. Your home for Cumberland Athletics, GoCumberlandAthletics.com. You can also, ladies and gentlemen, download the NAIA app on any Roku or Amazon device and watch the game live right there on your television. You can also watch it on demand. I do that for just about every single one of our games as well. I'll go back and re-watch the game after the fact right there on my couch. And uh, it's a great day to be alive, Thomas Denny. It's a great day to be alive with all the technology we have in front of us. Tigers will have the ball to open up the fourth quarter. Lee with it near the logo, looking at a man-to-man, -man, finds Pettigo on the left wing, now to the high post to Pritchett. Dribble handoff into the hands of Faith, right back over to Pettigo, 10 on the shot clock. Pettigo near the free throw line, not looking to score. Eventually over to Lexi on the left wing. Lexi all the way down, it's going to be turned over. Cumberland gets the steal. There was only two seconds left on the shot clock. Not a great possession by the Tigers. Johnson near the key, gets it over on the left wing to Sexton. Sexton's going to bring it back out. Cross-court pass to Johnson. Ball fake. Three on the way. No good. They'll push. Lee into the corner. Lake for three. Way short. Pedigo backdoor rebound. No good. Put back. No good. Second effort will be good. This one by Faith Lake. That'll push it back out in front by four. Swafford over to Johnson as they work it. Trying to get it across the timeline. Now they're able to do so. Sexton breaks it, gets it over to McKinney. 15-footer on the left side. Good. Well, she's really good from that spot. And Cumberland continues to handle that press well. Over to Pettigo on the right side. Has it outside the arc. Up top into the hands of Lexi. Back door. No, they'll go over to the left side. Now up top. Almost stolen. Swafford's going to try to beat her girl. Pokes it into the back court. Ten on the shot clock. Pritchett on the right elbow, gives it over to Lee, gets into the lane, down to the right block. Tough shot off the glass, no good, but she's fouled by Sexton. That will get an opportunity for some subs into the ball game for Cumberland. Once again, big minutes from Misha McKinney. Boy, what a luxury to have a player like that coming off your bench. So Freeman back into the ball game. 
Also back into the ball game for Cumberland is Tierra Davis. His number one is in, and also Kennedy Powell. Camelsville will go back out in front by three. They can make it four with this made free throw. They do so. Just over eight minutes to go in the game. Sexton bringing the ball up the court has played very well for Cumberland in this game. She'll find Freeman on the left side. Back over to Sexton near the logo. Back over to Freeman. Down to Swafford in the right corner who finds Sexton on the elbow. Sexton gets past it to Finner. Oh, and then trying to drop it off to Powell. And boy, she saw her, had the right idea, but the execution just wasn't there. That's a tough pass regardless, but it would have been a wide open layup if she could have got it there. But we'll go down the other end and with a four point lead and the ball. Big opportunity here for the Tigers. Lee down in the right corner, inside the arc, finds Pettigo at the high post, and it's stolen by Swafford. Cumberland gets the stop. Now Swafford is going to bring it up the court. It's going to go out of bounds. That'll be off of Campbellsville. Swafford's done that a couple times now. They kind of, offensive player loses her, and she just kind of reaches over and swats at it and gets it out of there. Sexton on the right wing, dribbles over to Swafford in the corner, up top to Freeman. Now they find Davis at the high post. Davis makes a move off the glass, no good. Going for her own rebound, no good. Lake with the rebound. She'll push. Faith handling, gets it up over to the right. Stutter move down to the block and fouled is Lauren Lee, and she'll go to the line. And you feel like maybe Campbellsville making a little bit more of a concerted effort to get to the free throw line as they're attacking the rim more. The three ball has not been good for them here today. Two of 12 as a team. Well, boy, they're knocking down their free throws as now they're now 15 out of 17. And that pushes it out to a five-point lead. If they can hit this one, it'll match their largest lead of the game at six. And they do just that. Still a two-possession game. Cumberland has done really well in these situations, answering the bell and not allowing that lead to swell any bigger than that. Keeping them in the game and giving them an opportunity here in the fourth quarter. Sexton over to Freeman, down in the corner. Swafford for three, no good. Nice rebound by Powell on the backside. Put back, no good. She gets another look at it. Can't get that one to go. Bodies flying all over the place. Camusville will come up with it. Lee in transition, drops it off to Pritchett, who's able to hit a running layup, and that'll push it out to eight. And that is now the largest lead of the game. And Coach Bloom not happy with this far official at all. He is looking for an explanation in a big way. We're going to keep it right here with 6.39 remaining. This is the biggest spot for Cumberland in this game, no doubt about it. They were able to keep this game, no, it was always at least a six-point game. Nobody ever led by more than six in this game until this moment, where it is now 58-50 to 50 with 6.39 remaining. Campbellsville averaging 84 points per game. I do not think they're going to get there today unless they just have an explosion offensively. Cumberland averaging 72, so you got to give Campbellsville's defense credit as well. They've done a good job holding Cumberland well under their average. But I also think that has a lot to do with conference play. You know, once you go into, you know, this first three, four weeks of non-conference play before, you know, you, you, your, your numbers can kind of swell a little bit. And then once you get into conference action, you all of a sudden see those numbers not quite what they were. There's a reason why when you look at a lot of stat sheets, season stat sheets, that uh, there's two different lines for conference averages and, and, and everything else. Uh, and that's because it's just tougher once you get into conference. And Cumberland with a tough assignment here Biggest possession so far of the game, and there will be many more of those if they're able to hit a shot here. Freeman at the logo. Inside the arc goes down to Rongo. She doesn't pull it. Goes back out to Johnson. Johnson will pull it. Can't hit it. Davis right there to clean it up. Put back his in. She's played really well today. 58-52, your score. 
Now they get the bucket. Can they get a stop with six minutes to play? Bounce pass to the high post. They go right back door and got exactly what they wanted. They go to the left high post. The girl that bounces it over there then goes back door to the right block. They drop it off. Keeps it at eight. Under six minutes, they go to Davis, the high post. Cross-court pass, Freeman open for three out of the corner. No good. Ball's going to go out of bounds, and that's going to be off of Campbellsville. Give Sexton some credit there as she was crashing the glass from the right elbow. Did not get a finger on it, but her presence alone kind of made it a little awkward for Campbellsville, so Cumberland will inbound underneath her own basket. They'll get it to Rongos. Rongos bounce pass into Davis. Davis trying to muscle her way in. Goes off the glass. No good. Pritchett at the high post. Squares up. Thought about the shot. Doesn't do it. Pritchett with her back to the basket. Almost gets it stolen. Able to get it over to Lee. Lee now. It's in on the clock. Finds Lexi now back up top three on the way. Good if it goes and it does. And now it's an 11-point lead, the largest of the game at any point for either team. Cumberland needs a bucket here as it's under five minutes. Johnson into the lane. Kicks it to Rongos. Three out of the corner. No good. Boy, Johnson had a could have had a 10-foot jumper right there. Opted to kick it into the corner. Rongos has hit some shots from that spot. Boy, boy, I'll take Johnson in the lane any day. And that'll bring us to a final media timeout of the game. And Cumberland really needs to regroup right here if they want to make a push and have a shot at this. 63-52 is your score. You're listening to Phoenix Basketball on the Cumberland Sports Network. Enterprise Rent-A-Car is the company with a wrap car, which means you get the best rental package around. With weekend specials available, Enterprise is the perfect choice for that trip to the ball game or that getaway with a family. Not only will they set you up with a great rental vehicle at a great price, but they'll also make life easier by picking you up. Before you get away, get on the phone and call Enterprise Rent-A-Car at 1-800-RENT-A-CAR. Enterprise Rent-A-Car on the bypass in Lebanon. Serving Wilson County since 2006, the Music City Star is Middle Tennessee's only passenger rail service. With stops in Lebanon, Martha, and Mount Juliet, the Music City Star can get you to work in the mornings and home in the afternoons without the stress. The train also has an evening trip on Fridays for those who want to enjoy downtown Nashville's restaurants and entertainment venues. For ticket and schedule information, visit musiccitystar.org or call 862-5950. The Music City Star, there is no traffic on the train. 449 remaining in the ball game. It's a 63-52 lead. The uh, Camelsville offense coming to life here in the fourth quarter. They've put 13 on the board, just a little under half the quarter to play. Pritchett over on the left side near the high post. Going to give it up to Pedigo. Pedigo's going to go over to Lee. Lee bounce pass back door. Now they're going to give it up, and that's going to be a foul called on Davis. That's going to get Misha McKinney off the bench as Davis picks up number four. Don't think this will be for very long. Davis will come back into the game pretty quickly here with just 4.30 to go. At the free throw line for Campbellsville. That's Courtney Pritchett. She hits it. She'll have another one. Makes it a 12-point lead, largest of the game, and now to 13. Huge, huge possession here for Cumberland. Still don't have to have a three at this point, but just need a good quality possession. Got to get some points somehow, though. McKinney right in the middle of the lane, 15-footer, no good. Better go with the board. Campbellsville in a position here where they do not have to shoot early in the shot clock if they do, don't want to. They'll work through some progressions out front. Eventually into the corner, and Lake will hit it. Lexi Lake hits that one. And just like that, it's 68-52 with under four to go. Oh, 
They now foul on the other end. And now opposing calls to officials. One call to block, one call to charge. Now they'll meet near free throw line to get it, get on the same page. And they do call it a charge. That's a big call there. Cumberland has got to get stops from here on out. This 16-point lead is the largest of the game, and it has come quickly. Bounce pass inside, and Cumberland gets a steal. Johnson's going to push. Got somebody hot on her heels. Slows it down now. Felt the defender coming. Now Johnson goes back on the attack. 15-footer on the way. No good. Too strong. And now we're going to get a foul underneath the basket. That's going to go against Pedigo of Campbellsville with 3.07 remaining. Nick George will come back into the game here. And I think we're going to get a quick timeout here by Cumberland. It'll be a full, so we'll take it with them. This is Phoenix Basketball here on the Cumberland Sports Network. As a business owner, you are offered an overwhelming array of sign and graphic options in today's marketplace. I'm Rick Stewart, owner of Signs Now in Lebanon. As a local business owner, I'll give you the personal attention you expect from a neighbor, as well as the resources to produce sign and graphic projects of any scope. And we'll stand behind everything we do. Come by Signs Now or give us a call at 444-9770 for the personal attention you deserve and the professional service you expect. At Signs Now, we believe a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Got a sports team? Need team apparel? Southeast Impressions is the place to go. Southeast Impressions can put your team logo on t-shirts, jerseys, hats, jackets, gear bags, or just about anything you want. Don't have a logo? Southeast Impressions has an in-house artist who can design a custom logo for you. From start to finish, Southeast Impressions can help your team get the look they want. Southeast Impressions, 114 Level Pike in Lebanon, or call 443-4700. So with 3.07 remaining in the ball game, all of a sudden it is a 68-52 lead for Campbellsville in a game that saw neither team with more than a six-point lead through the first three quarters. 18 points on the board offensively for Campbellsville here in the fourth quarter as Rongos gets a running layup. He stopped the bleeding momentarily, but Cumberland's got to come up with steals and buckets now. Pritchett gets it across the timeline to McGeorge. McGeorge gets it back to Pritchett. They'll go over to the right side to, to Lee. Lee goes to Pritchett at the high post, trying to find McGeorge. Now they go over on the left side to Lake. Can't do anything with it. More important to run clock here for Campbellsville. Lee inside the arc. They find Pritchett open for three. No good left short. Long rebound's going to go out of bounds. That's going to be last touched by Cumberland. Well, it's tough. You get a stop. But then it just kind of takes a bad bounce. And it will go back over to Campbellsville so they can get this thing right at the two-minute mark on this possession if they choose to do so. Got a bad inbound. They'll do it out of the corner. They're going to have to get it in the back court. Now they can trap if they want. I think they're wanting to foul. Pettigo into the corner. They'll let... An open three, and they miss it. Swaffer with the backside rebound. So Cumberland gets a stop. We'll see if they can get us any points on the other end. Sexton handling the ball. Takes it down to the logo, or excuse me, to the elbow. They find McKinney on the low block. McKinney trying to back her way down. Turns, shoots, and misses the shot. Sexton on the backside trying to save it, but it's going to say, they're going to say last touch by Campbellsville. Kudos to Pettigo there to go over and help up Sexton off the floor. And now back into the ball game will be the other Lake sister. She'll check in for her sister. They'll get it into Rongos near the high post, and she's going to have it stolen. Trying to make a move with the dribble and going the other way and laying it up is going to be Lauren Lee, and I think that's going to seal the deal, ladies and gentlemen. That'll push it out to 16 with under two to go. 
Cumberland would need a lot. Boy, this when people read and see the headlines and the final score of this game, they're going to think this was Campbellsville being Campbellsville as McKinney will score off an assist from Rongos on the right block. But they're going to look at this and think that this was a normal Campbellsville-Cumberland game that we've had the last couple of years, and it, it hasn't been. This was a six-point game the first three quarters. It wasn't until the fourth quarter here that Campbellsville really pushed this thing out as they get another bucket underneath there. It's going to be a tough loss for Cumberland. They played well enough to win the game the first three quarters. Long three, no good. McKinney with the rebound, put back and good. Cumberland's going to keep the pressure on with a minute to play. But you get the feeling a, a lot of good coming out of this. And Campbellsville didn't shoot the ball great from outside the arc. Other than that, I felt like they played a pretty normal game as Cumberland gets us. Players colliding all over the place here as players are just trying to get to the ball. And now with 30 on the clock, they're going to dribble this one out. But they will have to put one more shot up with the shot clock. Hard-fought game here by both teams. They'll get it into the corner. Now they're going to go down low to McGeorge. She'll put up a shot, and she's going to be fouled. She'll go to the line. So shot clock will officially be turned off, 72-58. And we're going to get a bunch of subs into the game for Campbellsville. We'll try our best to get their names out here. We got Maddie Boyle back into the ball game. Maddie Nolly into the game for the first time. Ashante Gore into the first time for the first time. McGeorge misses number one. She'll have another. And that one will go. And now coming in for McGeorge will be Madison Drummonds. Last possession of the game most likely here. 73-58. Sexton gets it across over to Johnson. Johnson on the left elbow. Dribble handoff to Swafford. Swafford brings it to the key. Round the arc, down to the right block. Layup on the way, good and one. And again, nice job by Maddie Boyle for Campbellsville, helping the Cumberland player off the floor. So with just 4.2, we can hit a free throw here. Make it 73-61. But to finish my thought from a moment ago, if people see the headline of this and don't read the story, they're going to miss out on what was a very good basketball game. Again, just no more than six points ever separated these two teams the first three quarters, but then 24 points on the board in the fourth quarter by Campbellsville really pushed it out, and they coast to a 73-60 win, a 13-point win here for Campbellsville as they will improve to 10-0 on the season, 6-0 inside of the Mid-South Conference, while Cumberland will fall to 5-7 and 1-5 and and inside of the Mid-South Conference. It's a tough loss for Cumberland. They played well enough the first three quarters to pick up the win against the top-ranked team in the country, but usually when you're a top-ranked team in the country, that means you play really well in the fourth quarter. That's exactly what Campbellsville was able to do here, and uh, that's going to do it. We'll take a break, guys. We'll come back. We'll give you your post-game stats, and then we'll also be able to catch up with head coach Scott Bloom to get his thoughts on the matchup.